and just in time for over the brow of the... Hello, welcome to Community of Independence, coming up on tonight's show. Simon Bird, come get your dinner. Sleeping with the fishes, Connor Cusack from Trout Records. Joe Blades, Aoife Barry, a music video by Gruesome Tucson. Now let's watch it. This is television, music television, yeah.
That was a music video. Now I'm joined by Connor Cusack of Trout Records. Thanks very much for coming into the show. Do you enjoy your, um, you know, non-specific fish base here as yeah, a gift? Yeah, it's pretty good, like, to be to fair, that you, you spent the, the 12 euros. I do kind of appreciate Rory's that. Rory's fishing tackle weren't willing to barter, unfortunately. Yeah, it's pretty good, like, commitment to the, I don't know, to the discussion, I guess. So I'll leave him here. It's called Trout on. Records because it was a record store in Georgia Street Arcades, yes? That is correct. Um, so the story starts when I was uh, a young boy of 15. Yeah. Um, or I basically was doing my work experience for transition year. Uh, and I remember actually specifically the point where I was like in bed the night before being like, oh, you know, that'd be a good place to work. I'll go in there and talk to him. So I went in and like my friend Nick, who's like, has been one of my oldest friends since, was like, yeah, yeah, he's American. He's like, yeah, I guess you could come in and we can, you know, do some work. So he was obviously delighted that like someone would clean out all the presses underneath for free. Um, so yeah, I started working there um, for like the two weeks and then I don't know, came back and kept hounding him for, for work until I got like whatever my Saturday and Sunday there. So I had that all through school and then all through college. Um, it was pretty much the most insane place to work, I think, in Why? the world. Well, just like, like the amount of freaks that you had to deal with on like a daily basis was just like absurd. Just like, I won't go into stories I shouldn't be gone into on, on television. I think just people, yeah, public urination would be one of them. Um, but consistent public urination for like okay. a, a member of, well, well, we'll, we'll brush that under the carpet and keep going. Um, sure. But, but yeah, you met the people that, that inevitably started Trout Records with you, the bands right. all kind of congregated around the record shop, right? Well, yeah, that's right. I mean, the, well, the record shop was called Trout Records. Mm. Um, and then, so yeah, so I mean, like, I, like I'm in Spies and we, I mean, we kind of started out there and we played like a couple of gigs in the shop. Uh, and then I re met Ross from Jet Setter. Like he, he was just basically just like a customer used to come in. And um, so he, he just like basically eventually started working there. Just kind of, it's pretty much exactly like High Fidelity. Mm. Like that's the exact buzz where people would just like hang around long enough to get jobs. And um, he wasn't like Jack Black though, which is probably a good defining good, point. Good thing for you. So um, yeah. So then Nick started the label. Right, you were yeah. You were in Spies. That's it. Start putting out some of the stuff. But then you, yes. you've taken up the baton and ran with it. Tell us, right. tell us about that moment. Yes. Okay. Well, I suppose we did uh, the first single, the seven inch Lars Comic King and then Distant Shorelines. Uh, and then he opened the Rage and I guess then kind of Trout, you know, it, it kind of closed down. Um, so when we were doing Distant Shorelines this summer, um, you know, I was like, well, it makes sense to do it on the label as well. And then I kind of was like, oh, do you know what? Like, there's so much amazing music around. Like, all of my best friends are in amazing bands. Um, so it's like, yeah, like, I asked him, like, can I just put bands out on the label? Um, so yeah, so it, since then it's been pretty good. We've got like Jet Setter and Tan and Felix. Um, yeah, it's just been going well. Just been putting out records and, and yeah. having fun. And what have you what have you learned in the last year then since you started this? Don't work with musicians. They're not good. Unreliable. Not unreliable. Just like like I don't know. Just don't do it. Don't put Strange demands. It. Yeah, like David Tappy from Tana Felix will only write in blue ink. So like anything that he ever writes has to be in blue ink. So I don't know why, but mm. um, I don't really trust his reasons behind it. But and that's just an example of kind of these are the kind of hurdles you have to basically jump. yeah I mean that might the not egos be the egos massage yeah exactly yeah the, the blue ink egos um, but no yeah honestly it's been so good like up to now um, yeah everyone's been lovely and really really good so I guess it's kind of nice because we're all kind of you know doing it together or whatever so yeah, yeah it's a, good. a big element of the label for you has been putting together house parties for the bands on the label kind right of generating a bit of a buzz around things through yeah. that when did that start. But to be fair, I can't really credit that. Um, like, well, I live it with Jeff and Neil, who play in Spies and in Jet Setter, um, and we've got like quite a nice, like just big house in the middle of town. Um, so we were like, it's basically a good alternative to renting a venue because I mean, obviously, you know, you're going to get people in because you can, you know, they don't cost you anything, and also you don't have to pay rental for a venue. Um, so we did the first Jet Setter one there, um, and it was like the sweatiest affair of all time. Um, it was like, what, you know, like in the summer when it was like insanely, insanely warm, but we obviously couldn't have any of the windows open because I mean, it's, you, the neighbours, like we live on Talbot Street, so we've had like bottles thrown through our windows before. So like the sight of like, I don't know, a lot of people listening to a, a band playing is probably gonna, you know, incur some sort of wrath from the locals. And um, so we had all the windows closed and like pretty much 85 people in the house. So it was, yeah, it was pretty warm. Um, but it was a good gig nonetheless, I think. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I was gonna keep doing them. It's just like good cool. fun. Fun way of playing Un people. Until people complain or the bottles finally break through, you're going to keep Well, no, the bottle did break through. Oh, okay. So, yeah, so that, like, that's a, at least the worst case in the situation has already happened. So we've sure. already had the, the broken glass. But I don't know, yeah, keep doing it until people get sick of our house. But the, it's been two years, so cool. it doesn't show any signs of stopping. And in 2000... 
14. Yeah, that's the next year. Less than one, yeah. That, that makes me feel old. Um, <laughs> can I ask, you're going to be releasing a 7-inch with a couple of bands. You've yet to name it to anybody, or, or can you tell us exclusively about some of the stuff? Tell us up? of any of the bands that I've been working with. Yeah, um, for next year. Well, I've been courting the Prince of Pop, I suppose, to speak figuratively. Um, I can't really reveal who the Prince would be, but, yeah. uh, but if you know him, I think you might uh, appreciate the... Uh, the reference, uh, okay. but if he comes on board, then yes, we'll be doing his seven inch. Jet Setter, we've got like their, I don't know, like their, their ever expanding collection of songs. They write songs at a rate that like, I can't even, I don't know how to do it. Mm -hmm. um, but they've, yeah, at least another 10 songs, that, some of which will be released. And then Tano Felix, I'm sure we'll wanna squeeze one out as well. Very good, <laughs> on, that, on that weird note. Right. We'll take a break. We're gonna have a look at Aoife Barry speaking to Ghost Estates. Welcome to the Community of Independence, Dan and Colm from Ghost Estates. How That's are things at you? Grand, yes, yeah, grand. Thanks for having us. Good, good. Very glad uh, to have you here on the show, especially because I believe you're working on your second album at the moment. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah. yeah. We've been getting stuck into that now the last couple of months, so it's going well. Just it's fun to get away from the old songs now and yeah. something fresh. Yeah. Just kind of hidden away in the studio, <laughs> day in day out, like, <laughs> trying to get the songs together. It's kind of, is it like all encompassing? Is it really, really kind of, you know, serious and uh, intense? Uh, um, not intense, well, it can be at times when things aren't going. It's always the playing the be. arguments and yeah. goes to state anyway. It's always like that anyway. You know. <laughs> You're in those bands that kind of survive on that kind of fight. You know, yeah, <laughs> fight in fighting a little bit. Or, in a nice um, way. Well, two brothers in the band, yeah. Yeah. And Brian. <laughs> so, oh, yeah, it's totally, uh, you expect that, so yeah. for uh, <laughs> with two brothers. And so can you tell us, I mean, what we can expect maybe from the second record? Have we changed direction in any um, way or tried anything new? Yeah, we're trying to get away from kind of, I don't know. Yeah, we're trying, like, we're using, uh, Brian's start using, like, uh, kind of software sampling, like, Ableton, and that kind of stuff. So we've been playing around with that the last, the last while, so that's been interesting. It sounds fresh, like, yeah. to, to us, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Would you be very much perfectionist about things? So, like, would you know? Some people are, are a bit more free and easy about stuff. They kind of feel like things are done at a, at a certain point. But do you really keep going back to tracks yeah. and be yeah. very fastidious about it? Yeah, you kind of like maybe overdo sometimes. sometimes. <laughs> like, if something works kind of fast, it's almost like we're suspicious of it, and then we tear it down and try it ten different ways, yeah. and then like not all the time, but like sometimes we'll end up with that pretty much similar <laughs> to that first jam yeah. mobile phone recording of the song <laughs> yeah. like after like you know a couple of Going weeks. Going down loads of different avenues and wow. wrecking her head. Like, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but sometimes it clicks and it's just like that's grand, that's done, leave it yeah. there. But sometimes a lot of times it's <clears throat> can take a while. It's a pain. <laughs> yeah. And you want to feel like you've put the work in too, so maybe yeah. if something happens quickly, you're like, hold on, maybe I haven't legitimately put enough yeah. work into what I'm doing. That's it, I need yeah. to break the back of it or whatever before, yeah. Yeah. before it's done. And what was it that made you both individually decide that you wanted to make music and that you wanted to be in bands and, and write and, and perform when you were, were you quite young when you decided I want to do this? Yeah. Brit, Brit pop, I think, I was know, yeah. the, the reason I kind of, I don't know, just wanted to get drums and just play music. <laughs> yeah. That's kind of what got yeah. me into it, I suppose. Yeah, same here, back in primary school or whatever, like just the tail end of it, like just kind of, this is for me, this is what <laughs> I want to do. I was in the charts and all then, like, and yeah. as well, like, so going from that, like, teeny bopper age into, like, you know, like, Pull Blur away, it's all them in the charts and it was just going, everybody picked up a guitar. And were there any records, um, maybe aside from the Britpop records, any older records that you listened to growing up that you really loved, either that your parents were playing or older siblings or uh, that, that you thought, oh, I really like, like, like the sound of this? And um, do a little with Pixies, really? my older yeah. brother. He had loads of, he got me into music, like just played me like tons of stuff. Um, Doggy style, which is new. No, honest to God, like, yeah, yeah, that's and a very chronic and all that kind yeah. of seminal rap albums, yeah. yeah.
Dan, do you want to tell me about the studio that you have yourself? And uh, we're talking about the kind of collaborative aspect of music in, in Dublin and Ireland and how that ties in with that as well. Yeah, it's uh, basically, it's called Darklands Audio. I was I set it up probably, I've been in there about a year. It's like this, this used building. It's like the first poured concrete building in Dublin. Random facts there, there but uh, it's um, basically this guy took it over and it's just being sectioned off kind of and there's like artists, there's people making hats, there's jewellery makers, there's a, a photography studio, there's also Dublin's first urban rooftop farm which is really cool and um, that's going to supply the food for the cafe on, on, on the ground floor and stuff so, so it's really cool and it's all people starting, starting new businesses like you know trying to get um, <coughs> back working really. Yeah, that's so. great. I mean, was it always an ambition of yours to have a studio of your own or? Yeah, well, I kind of knew for the last few years that I'd love to like, you know, have a studio. I, to be honest with you, I didn't think I would by now, but I was just, I had finished an EP actually for the North Sea and I just got paid and I was like, I'd love to do this for a living. <laughs> That's all uh, great stuff and uh, best of luck with the release of, and of the second album and best of luck with the recording of the second mm. album and all that sort yeah. of stuff. Hope it goes great for you. Um, thanks a million Ghost Estates for chatting to us on thanks Community of Independence. We'll go now to Danny in studio. Aoife Barry speaking to Dan and Jalzy from Ghost Estates. You're going to see a performance from them later in the show. But I am joined by Connor Cusack of Trout Records. Hello. Connor, earlier we were talking obviously about starting the label, what you've done in the last year. Now, right. more recently, you've been expanding out into doing video sessions. Yeah, there you go. Um, well, I mean, what, what, made you, what made you decide to do that? Um, well, I suppose <clears throat> we were looking at, well, I was looking at a way of um, releasing like live videos of bands on the label that would be kind of really well shot really nice, kind of do do us all proud. Yeah, nice um, showcase for things. Yeah, I suppose it was kind of like, all right, this is the buzz, you know, this is what we're about, this is the band on the labels. Um, then I realised, it's like, why not just hassle all the bands that I love in Ireland and see if they'll come in and do one for me. Um, so I started emailing all of my faves, all my babies. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> and yeah, so they all came down. Uh, it was three days of pretty, uh, pretty bad mania. Like, I mean, trying to get nine bands done in three days in a studio uh, and get them all shot and everything was, was pretty pretty serious undertaking. Um, so I have to give my props to my boys at Second Frame Films. Okay. Um, they did it like it's pretty serious. Like it's I don't know, grueling. Like to just be literally on your feet. Like in like the lights were just insane in the studio. Again, mm. it was in the summer, so it was a, a sweaty affair. Um, but yeah, so we just got like all the, all the guys down, the different bands, and just like did it over three days. Yeah, and um, the reaction so far has been really good. You've just been releasing them. Is it every fortnight you're releasing videos? Yeah, well, <clears throat> it's every fortnight, like give or take, you know, okay. a few days. Um, but yeah, no, it's been it's been really good so far. Nine and nine has been pretty cool and uh, showed the three of them so far. Um, so yeah, so delighted. Um, Tan and Felix went up. Is this is a week in ahead? Is it? Let's not worry about that. Right, so Tan and Felix in the, is in, on in the, the internet. In the, in the definite period of time ago, it was well, released. Well, sure, we're going to look at it right now. That's what, true. What do yeah. you want to tell us about it? Um, I think it's pretty good. Uh, it features like David Tapley doing his Neil Young vibe. Um, Evan is the bass player, he's looking pretty good. He's looking pretty hot to trot. He's throwing some, throwing some snake hips. Okay. Um, Muldee's he's got his poise, and then Faker is sharp. So I think they're looking, looking good. Let's have a look. I think there is, but I'm getting
that was Tan and Felix, How Strange, comma, The Weather. It's very cold, isn't it, Connor? It is. That comma is also very important, so just pay heed to that one. You, you, have, to, um, you have to take note of punctuation where punctuation's due. It is. It's crucial. Um, should I also, I, I shouldn't be looking at the camera at any point. I just realised. Have a look at it. I, mean, I don't want to. I don't know which give one. Give it a wave. Like. Say hello to any of the people at home. Say, hey, man. How's it going? You're in the band Spies. What are Spies going to be doing? Um, in general, or like... Yeah, in the, in, the, in the near future. Playing a gig in London, uh, either in a week time or three weeks ago or uh, at some point, uh, depending on when this gets aired. Have you ever played in the UK? Have you ever gone over a tour? In... No. So, yeah, we're really excited. Mm -hmm. um, so we're playing a gig in London in the Sebright Arms. And how did that come about? Uh, just got asked to do it by some dude. Uh, his name's John, really nice guy who runs this uh, promotions company. And he just asked mm -hmm. us to come over. And have you guys been going through, um, like, just hustling yourselves to get kind of attention for things, just contacting music websites? Like, like The Guardian, for example, picked up on you guys right, a few months yeah. back. How did that come about? Yeah, just we're working with um, this dude, uh, Dan. Uh, he's just brilliant at getting people to listen to your music. Mm. Um, so he's given us a really good help getting out mm. there. Um, but yeah, no, so people seem to be liking cool. it in the UK. And previously you talked before about um, going to the FMC and finding them really helpful when you were starting out. That's right. How did, how did they help you? Just like nice people in that office. It's like have a, have a nice chat with them and they say, oh, have you tried doing this? And do you know what a booking agent is? And you know, have you heard of the internet and all these kind of things that <laughs> you probably should be aware of as a, as a band starting out? Um, yeah, they're just quality, like to be honest. Like even like Steve, I kind of see out every so often. We always have a drink and he's just mm -hmm. boss and Angela's lovely. Um, yeah, they're just great, great people. Just giving you the tools or the, the, the theory which you can then put into action as yeah. a band, yeah? Well, just giving you the time of day, to be honest, which is like the main one. Like, you know, it's kind of, especially when you're starting out, it's quite obviously daunting and especially, you know, the industry, the way it works, the more you find out about it, the more you realise you just don't have a clue about anything. So, it's at, like, at the start, it's really nice to have someone say, well, these are the things that maybe you could be looking towards in the next year. Mm. And then you can get your foot in there, try and start doing other things, you know? Cool. Well, thanks very much for coming into the show, Connor. No worries. Showing us your video and all shake that. Shake hands. You can do that. That's good. That's want, to present, good want to present you the fish one more time? Yes, please. Do I uh, look into the... Give a thumbs. That one. Now, now we're going to have a look at Ghost Estates recorded live in the Button Factory. Accidents waiting to happen. I wanted to be with you till the end. You asked never to see me again Our love was always in the end An accident waiting to happen
to see me again My love was always in the end An accident waiting to happen Hey guys, this week I'll be reviewing the new mini album Landslide by Brian Knift with Susan Walsh and Dermot McDermott. The album had a wintry feeling. It had a touch of snowflakes, but in a creepy kind of way. It had an eerie echo that reminded me of witches and banshees. Overall, I found it interesting, but I wouldn't put it on at a disco. And what do you think, Jowls Holland? I'm back to you, Danny. Now it's time for a gig guide, and we're starting for gig tomorrow night in Whelan's. Cat Dowling playing there. No, uh, that's Cat Stevens, Cat Dowling. No, de no, that's Dealey, de Dowling. Do we, do we have any stock footage of Cat Dowling? Great. Poorly drawn drawing of Top Cat. Okay, that, that, that'll do. Cat Dowling in Whelan's 10 euro into that one Friday night. Saturday night in Fibber McGee's On Earth playing a gig. That's the heavy metal band who differentiate their singer by always having him emphasize his authority over the other members by crossing his arms. He's, he's a bit different than the others, as you can see in Exhibit A. Exhibit B as well, keeping on trend, bit of continuity there, and the less impactful Exhibit C in the patio surroundings doesn't have the same authority or power, but still crossing his arms. So they're, they're in Fibber McGee's uh, 16 euro into that one with support from the Red Enemy. Saturday night in the Button Factory, good wee gig there, 23 euro in for Deltron 3030. That's a super group of the hip hop Variety featuring Dan the Automator, Kid Koala, Kid Koala there, and as well Del the Funky Homo Sapien. Uh, then after that we have Workman's Club. Yes, Saturday night in the Workman's Club, 15 euro win for the Paul Daniels of Synthesizers, Magic Pockets. He's playing support to Ghost Maps in the Workman's Club Saturday night. Then Saturday night in the Grand Social, 15 euro in for Wooden Shajips. That is the uh, Stoner Rock trio that uh, have a disregard 
for common spelling of the word ships. So that's 15 euro in the Grand Social Saturday night. Then finally, our gig on Wednesday night in the Twisted Pepper. We had working class records Dean Scurry into us previously. It is their 10th birthday bash in the Twisted Pepper on Wednesday night. Should be good for a few yolks and all that kind of thing. Uh, we've got Moss Chops there. He'll be playing that as well as Willow Lee, Costello and all the usual working class records. Lads. So it should, should, be, should be good gig. Good gig. Now it's time for a gig that uh, happened last weekend. We filmed at Alone in Whelan's charity gig. Good bands at it. Dave Gillespie went down with the camera. Let's have a look. Um, well, I've been doing gigs all year, um, bringing over international acts and stuff like that. But I decided uh, after you know doing that, I figured I might as well you know do something with a non-financial motive as such, um, do something that would give something back as opposed to just, you know, kind of standard gig. Um, and I kind of hope that people would support that for that reason. So. Alone is a charity that I decided to support because they are a non-government funded charity, first and foremost. They raise all their own funds, they help the one in ten vulnerable older people that we have in this country. Um, I'm very close to my own grandparents so that was an extra um, incentive to choose Alone. Uh, this is the first time I've done a gig like this, uh, first time I've attempted to do a charity gig for Alone and uh, we got five bands, Irish bands. Second time I've been on Community of Independence <laughs> in December. Uh, there's unfortunately no Santa Claus with me this time, but uh, yeah, just keep an eye on the older people around you. Uh, especially this time of year, it's very difficult for older people when it gets cold. A lot of people, a lot of older people aren't taken care of by their families if they even have families anymore. So, you know, if there's someone around you that is vulnerable to this kind of weather at this time of year, you know. Keep an eye out, it's good to give.
Thank you. Sure, that was great. And now I'm here with Simon Bird, going to be performing for us later on the show. Let me ask you, Simon, recently you contributed to Distance from the Event, playing the Fringe Festival, yeah. soundtracking that. But did you see that very much as, as your own body of work, or was it affected by the, by the actual play? I was kind of a little torn between it, really, because, like, obviously, um, it was the first time I've ever written music that's, like, for a specific purpose. Mm. Um, so I guess, like, in a way, I was kind of... I had to kind of lose a sense of it being my own work and try and make music that was right for the play. Yeah. And, and how did you find it, like working within somebody's narrative? Um, were you conscious of um, trying to illustrate things in a certain way? Yeah, I guess so. I mean, from the uh, just from the time frame of when we did it, I kind of for a lot of it, I was working like the drafts out just from the script. So then we'd bring it to rehearsal and like, we'd try it out and see how it worked. And then I'd have to kind of make amendments to that and stuff like that. So it was kind of a back and forth between um, making the music that how I wanted to be and having to like make sacrifices and change things. Sure, compromise so, things here. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Um, well, what's it like, like working with a, a constraint or a limitation? Like you've done the Break Breads compilation before where you have a, a set limitation of tempo or, or so yeah. many samples. The thing that was good about that particular project was that the, the samples would be chosen by different producers who'd have different tastes. Mm -hmm. So then you'd have to take those kind of songs and Move out rules. of your comfort zone. Yeah, move out of the comfort zone, kind of just try and put your own spin on it, but using samples you might not necessarily use. And you mentioned previously, like that, you know, it's it's all yourself, all all your own work, and, and obviously there's nobody to bounce things off in that respect. Yeah. Is it hard to have a kind of motivation or, or doubt yourself in that respect? I don't think so. I think um, I kind of have a very set idea of what I want to do. So mm -hmm. I guess I kind I'm kind of my own kind of person. I bounce a lot of stuff off friends as well. Sure. So. Yeah, yeah. and, and um, in terms of stuff that's going to be happening in the, in the next year, you're going to have a new e new EP coming out. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm recording at the moment. Um, just started a new EP. Um, yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, are you going to do that through a, a funded campaign? You've had success with. I don't really know, to be honest. Um, I'd kind of like to maybe try and sort of step up the kind of distribution or something. Maybe try and find someone to do press for it, or maybe a label to release it. Cause mm. I'm just, um, Sorry. <laughs> no, that's okay. That. Well, I mean, like you found that that beneficial previously, like um, through the Lightbox tour with a group of people, and then yeah, yeah. And doing your no, own. No, it's IP. just like I mean, personally, I'm not particularly great at the whole kind of PR side of things. Sure. So it's great to it'd be, well, it would be great to find someone that would be able to help me with that. Yeah. I guess. And in terms of doing distance from the event, um, would you be looking to do more soundtrack or theatre work? Um, I don't know. I think one of the things that I really enjoyed about that particular project was that a lot of the people that were involved to it were friends of mine. Mm. So I, I don't know how. Um, if that's a route that I'd necessarily want to go down, sure. even though I really enjoyed it. Yeah, I, I guess it's, it's easier working with people that you know and trust and that, yeah, it was you know, a, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't hurt you to No, definitely not. Wrong. I mean, it was a project that I was really interested in as well. So, I mean, I don't know. I haven't really thought about it. Well, look, well, what you'll think about now is perform for us on the telly. We're great. Yeah. Greatly appreciate you being here. We did, did buy your dinner. Thank you. Come and get your <laughs> Simon Bird was the, the cue there. Yeah. yeah. Um, sure, look, I'll let you switch things on. I'll switch on something here, huh? Yeah. Or off. And away you go. There you, there you go. Thanks. I'm just going to have to move this, but thank you. <laughs> <laughs>